Welcome to video 9.2 for the UOIT AEDT program's adult learning in a digital context course. In this video, we will examine characteristics to consider when examining the quality of a rubric. So before we begin, take a moment to consider these questions and perhaps jot down some initial reactions. In the previous video, we explored two types of rubrics defined by their purpose. As viewed in the previous video, a rubric is a tool that is extremely useful for assessing authentic learning tasks. And depending on the authentic learning tasks, such as these listed before you, a holistic or analytic rubric could be used to classify products or processes along a continuum of learning and might possibly serve as an instructional tool if the rubric is of high quality. Let's consider some of the qualities of a high quality rubric by considering previous rubrics you have used as a student or instructor. What are some of the components that made the rubric high or not so high quality? Start a list of what you consider important elements for consideration when creating a rubric and we will share during tutorial. Let's look at this analytic rubric. Why is this analytic? How can one tell just by looking at this at a glance? Yes, there are multiple criteria and a continuum for each. Now let's first look at the criteria. Is it clear what this rubric addresses? It says questions, but what about questions? Is it about posing questions, responding to questions? What about plans and conducts investigations or observations? What exactly do these criteria reflect? Let's start with the first row, questions. Upon closer inspection, we see that the criterion refers to both asking questions and identifying problems. On the surface, it may appear that the rubric is clear. Each level is clearly delineated by a descriptor, always, frequently, sometimes, rarely. So does this criterion about questions have to do with quantity of questions and problem identification? Again, you would have to go back to the purpose of the rubric, back to backwards design. What is it that the task is hoping to achieve? What is worthy of learning? Let's take a closer look. So here are the two learning objectives. Pause to read and consider if they are reflected in the first row. What do you think? Does the first row address the quality of problem or question? It is simply referring to quantity. This would need to be addressed explicitly at the onset of the planning. Now, assuming we do use this rubric, take a look at this vignette. Be prepared to provide a level to reflect the questions. Meet Stu. Ms. Cater, Ms. Cater, I found a spelling mistake in your notes. There are quite a few of them. Also, where can I find the readings? Why did you pick this particular author? How much is the assignment three worth? There is a problem with the due date. It's my birthday and I will not be in town. This is a big problem. What should I do? Based on this criteria, as you see before you, where would you place Stu along the questions continuum? Yes, he asked lots of questions. Is there other information to guide this classification? No, so he does ask a lot of questions and he identified problems. Again, it is hard to say exactly where he might fit on this row without additional information, but for this example, we might be able to assume that he may fit within the level three or four along the continuum. There are other issues with this particular row, but let's look at another row for additional analysis. I can't believe I got in trouble again for tossing the test tube to my lab partner. We are both baseball players and I know we would never miss. Why do I have to serve a detention for that? I'm also kind of bored, so tossing lab equipment around adds to the excitement. We had to conduct this silly investigation where we had to manipulate the independent variable. I know that in order to conduct fair tests, I only needed to manipulate one of the independent variables, but I got in trouble for trying to manipulate two. The only reason I did this was because I already know what will happen when I increase the amount of variable number one. Absolutely nothing. I did it in science camp this past summer. I'm so bored. Let's look at the second row. Look at the criterion. Is this clear? What is missing? What about planning and conducting investigations? Are we looking at quality? Are we looking at procedural accuracy? 
Are we looking at consistency or frequency? Upon closer inspection, once again, we can see that this rubric has to do with frequency. Rarely, occasionally, usually, consistently. Is this a problem? Consider the other descriptor though. Not only is the frequency being assessed, but so is the clarity. Is this a problem? So how would you score STU as it is written? Let's start with communicating the method clearly. I'm not really sure what method this rubric is referencing, so it is hard to say. He did articulate quite clearly though that he understood the need to control for one independent variable to conduct fair tests. So he might be a three or four, but did he actually do it? From the sounds of it, he didn't, but does he understand why? Is the depth of understanding reflected here in this rubric? Not really. I think we can definitely say that he did not use equipment appropriately. But if we score him here and score him here for communicating or controlling variables, how do we achieve a score? This rubric clearly has problems by placing too many items within this criterion. But then again, we don't really know what the criterion really means. It still provides feedback for the learner to some extent, but to apply a numerical value to this is going to be challenging and probably not reflective of the guiding principles of assessment we have previously explored. Okay, the final row has to do with observations. Again, not very clear. What about the observations? Quality? From the looks of the descriptors in the continuum, it appears it is more about organizing the observations. What are some problems besides lack of clarity about what exactly observations refers to? Pause and take a look. Let's see what Stu came up with. His reading accurate? Not on a table though. Were his observations relevant? Maybe, but based on this description, one might argue that Stu did note that Miss Cater was giving him a reminder of some sort, and that is indeed relevant. He did not create a table. Does he do this consistently? Is his work accurate? It is, but we don't know if it is consistent. Again, the wording is not clear because we are not clear on what we are measuring, and there are too many things combined within one cell. Let's now look at this holistic rubric borrowed from this website. This is assessing research skills of a particular research project in a holistic manner. What is the problem with this? Pause and consider. Hopefully you will see that while it looks to be holistic, it still includes a variety of criteria that may be more appropriate for an analytic rubric. Why is this? If we look at this rubric, what if the excellent researcher included nine sources, but met the rest of this criteria? Is the researcher then in between? Again, it is challenging to determine the quality based on this limited information, but we need to consider potential areas that may pose some challenges in completing fair assessment. Again, if we look at what constitutes a poor researcher, we see that a poor researcher includes one to four sources. What if the topic has very little written and the researcher has demonstrated all of the other criteria listed in level three? Is this a fair assessment of the researcher? We would need to look at the learning objectives and begin from there to see if the rubric actually assesses what it was intended to measure. But hopefully you are beginning to see the qualities of a strong rubric. Take a look at this rubric modified from the previous source. Is this better? Why? Why not? What had to happen? Pause and rewind if necessary to see the differences. It appears that all criteria are weighted equally. Is this appropriate? What do you think? Why? Take a look at this rubric once again modified from the previous example. It appears that accuracy is weighted more than the other three criteria. Based on the limited information we have, do you think this is appropriate? Why or why not? Consider the following questions. This is what this video addressed. Thanks for watching.